and welcome to my art studio, which is also my dining room table. I wanted to get together with you today to show you how to make your own sidewalk chalk at home. We're going through some pretty challenging times all over the world right now, and one very inspirational thing that people seem to be doing all over the world is writing messages, creating art, using chalk on sidewalks and streets. As a result, if you actually go and try to find some chalk online to buy, if you don't happen to have any, what I'm finding, I'm in Denver, Colorado, is that it's sold out in so many places. So I went searching online to try to find a recipe so that I could make my own sidewalk chalk at home, and I'd like to share that with you. Let's look at the supplies that you need in order to make the chalk. The first thing that you're going to need is Plaster of Paris. This is available at any home improvement store and online. As far as I know, there hasn't been a run on Plaster of Paris. It's very inexpensive and it's a powder. You want to get the interior powder. You're also going to need some tempera paint. Tempera is a non-toxic paint. Many of us know it as a poster paint. I happen to have a couple of different brands here in my art room, and any of these inexpensive poster paints that are tempera paints and labeled non-toxic will work. You're also going to need some cardboard tubes. This one happens to be from toilet paper, which hopefully you actually do have, given how much toilet paper has been sold around the world lately. You can also use a paper towel tube as well that can be cut down. You can probably get two or almost three little rolls out of one paper towel roll. The next thing you're going to need is freezer paper, and this is a plastic coated paper, and it looks like this. It's very shiny and plasticky on one side, a matte finish on the other. This is what we're going to be using as our release paper for our chalk, and you need to have one six inch by six inch square for each piece of chalk you're going to make. You're also going to need some duct tape, and I happen to have this in bright red. This is what we're going to use to actually seal the end of our chalk form so that when we pour our liquid into the form, it doesn't come seeping out the bottom. So a roll of duct tape. You're also going to need a bowl to mix in. And as you can see, I use a separate recycled plastic bowl for each color that I make. You wanna make sure that you're using a bowl that you don't use for food. So something recycled or upcycled, it can be a yogurt container. I think there was rice in here. Um, you can even probably use a tin can if that's something you have. I know a lot of people during these times of COVID-19 have purchased quite a few canned goods. So you can do your mixing in a can as well. That's absolutely fine. So use whatever you have at home, as long as you're not going to use that same container for food. You're also going to need some kind of measuring cup. And these are also little upcycled or recycled containers that I have from applesauce, but it's probably about a half a cup size. And again, you don't wanna use something that you would be using for your food as well. So you wanna make sure that you're designating these as art space use or art tools, as opposed to then going and using them for your food. I would recommend if you happen to have multiples of these, it can be really helpful to have two or three of them. And I'll show you why in a moment. You're also going to need something to mix with, and I have found that a plastic spoon works just fine for this purpose because I can both mix and I can then use the spoon to transfer that mixture into my tubes. So I have found a plastic spoon to be very useful, and as you can see here, I actually have a plastic spoon for each color, but you don't need that because what you'll find with your plaster after you make one of your chalk pieces is that this is very, very flaky and brittle once it's dry. So you can easily, as you can see, very easily clean off your spoon from having chalk residue and use the same spoon for multiple colors. 
You're also going to need a pair of scissors in order to cut your duct tape. Finally, I do want to share a note about protection. And I know that that's a sensitive subject during these times when so many healthcare workers are short on protective supplies or personal protective equipment. I'm fortunate in that I happen to already have some protective equipment here in my art room that I had long before the COVID-19 outbreak occurred. So I have this pair of gloves. As you can see, they are well-loved and well-worn, and I just use them over and over again. They're not something that obviously I'm able to provide to help out right now since they're totally contaminated. Um, if you don't have a pair of protective gloves or kitchen gloves, you really wanna think about what you can put, maybe a pair of winter gloves on your hands, something to protect your hands because it's not great when you're working with plaster of Paris dust um, to have the possibility of breathing this in or inhaling it or having it in contact a lot of times with your hands. Um, so I recommend that you use gloves. Um, you can also use it outdoors. I also, again, because I'm an artist, for a long time I've had protective masks, you can see this one has paint on it, um, in my art room that I had, again, long before the COVID-19 pandemic began. These are very, very challenging to get a hold of now, and of course I would employ you to not get a hold of them now for art purposes, but to leave them for our healthcare workers. If you happen to have a used one at home, great, please go ahead and use that for yourself. If not, a great thing to do is to tie a bandana around your nose and mouth when you're doing this project, or do it outdoors on your porch if you have an outdoor space um, so that you're in a well-ventilated area. But again, you just wanna be careful. You don't wanna be working with this dust and mixing this dust and then inhaling this dust. Just not good for you. So I think those are almost all the supplies we need. The last thing that you're going to need is some water. But you're going to need probably about a half a cup of water for each stick of chalk that you make. So I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna put on my protective gloves and we'll get started. So I should confess whether I'm working in my art space or working in the kitchen, I'm not very good about measuring things exactly. And I think for this project, there's some wiggle room in terms of measurement. Um, I'll give you some approximate measurements and then you can play around with your mixtures. So first we're going to need our tempera paint and our plaster of Paris, as well as some water. And you're gonna follow the directions on your plaster of Paris. So for my plaster of Paris, the mixing directions call for, and I don't know if you can see that, I'm gonna bring this way high up, but for the actual mixing instructions, it says add two parts of the plaster of Paris to one part cold water. So when I told you about having your little cups like this, it can be really helpful to have one that you're gonna use for your liquid and one that you're gonna use for your powder. That way you're not getting your powder wet as you're trying to take powder from the Plaster of Paris box. So if we need one cup of liquid, the liquid for our project is going to be a combination of water and paint. The paint is considered a liquid in this project. And so I would suggest you use about two tablespoons of your tempera paint. So two tablespoons is six teaspoons, but as I said, I'm not very exacting with my measurements, so I'm just gonna open my paint and I'm gonna squirt it into my container. So I'm gonna figure that's about a teaspoon. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So kind of six squirts and a little for good luck. Um, the more you do this, the more you'll get a sense of what the mixture feels like, but that's about two tablespoons. And now I've got to use my imagination and imagine, okay, if I had that two tablespoons of paint in this cup, how far up would it fill up this cup? And so I think it would probably fill up, I don't know about that much. So now I need the rest in water. 
because remember we need one part liquid to two parts of powder. So I'm just gonna dunk into my water. I'm not gonna fill my water all the way. You can see that I've left space and I'm gonna pour my water into my paint. And I'm gonna designate this as my wet cup and I'm gonna put that aside and I'm just gonna stir my paint into my water, try to mix that so that it combines pretty well. And yes, this can be a messy project. So you can see I'm working on a piece of paper. You can work on a piece of freezer paper that you tape down, which is great because it's pretty water resistant. So you can work on a piece of plastic, but this is gonna make a little bit of a mess. Of course, if you used a less shallow mixing bowl, um, you probably wouldn't make as big of a mess, but I'm using these containers that I have multiples of. So I'm gonna make a little mess. So now we're gonna get our plaster of Paris. And again, you don't wanna kind of put water right into your plaster of Paris. So you can see I have a designated measuring cup for the plaster of Paris. And we're going to need two parts of the plaster of Paris. We're gonna add this slowly. So I find that the first cup that I add, that's almost full, I can add almost the entire thing at once and mix very easily. So let's go ahead and mix that one in. And you really want to combine this well. And you'll see it starts to feel like a pancake batter, but don't eat it. Definitely do not eat this. And it also has an odor. So again, working in a well-ventilated area, opening your windows, or if you have some outdoor space where you can remain socially distanced and still work, doing this outdoors is a great idea as well. So that seems pretty well mixed. So I'm gonna come in and get my second measuring cup full of our powder. And remember, if you're using a different kind of measuring cup or actual measuring cups that you're gonna designate for your art purposes, this is about a half a cup in volume. So this one I find we've gotta add a little bit more slowly because it'll start getting thicker and thicker and a little bit harder to mix. So I find that I kind of like to add this bit by bit and then add a little more until we've got the entire thing combined. And you can see it's starting now to get much more thick. It's almost like an icing consistency now. So we've gone from batter to icing and it's gonna get even thicker. And the more you make this, the more you'll get a sense or a feel for what it should feel like. And if you need to add a little bit more water or a little bit more paint or a little bit more of your plaster of Paris powder. And hopefully now you can see how creamy this is, kind of how thick it is. It'll kind of hold a peak on the spoon. And that's looking pretty good to me and pretty well mixed. So you've got about 25 or 30 minutes before this starts to set. So it's okay now for us to move to preparing our tube. You can also prepare your tubes in advance. So all we wanna do is first seal one of the ends of our cardboard tube. So I've cut two pieces of duct tape and you just wanna put it right over the end of your tube. So covering the whole end of that tube and then putting down the ends. And then I find just because I don't trust that things won't seep out, I cut a second piece of duct tape and go the opposite way. So like I've made a plus sign on the bottom of my tube and then I put that down as well and seal that. And that makes me feel a little bit more confident about what I'm doing. 
You can, of course, also have a container available for holding your tube in place while it's drying, just in case you do have any leakage out the bottom, that'll at least trap it in a little cup. And the next thing we need to do is just take our six inch square piece of freezer paper. This is the shiny side. And we wanna take that and put it into our roll. So making a roll out of your paper and putting it into your roll. And it's fine if it sticks up beyond the paper towel roll, that's not a problem. You just wanna make sure that it's all the way down into the bottom. So now our form is ready for our chalk mixture. So now we've got to transfer this, this again can be a little messy, into our tube. So I find I put it on the spoon and then I try to get it really far down there and then just keep transferring. And what I have found is that the mixture that we've just made together is good for one large piece of chalk. Sometimes I'll have a little left over, and that's like the short little piece that you saw, the blue one earlier. This is a short one. This is an extra long one. So sometimes I find that I have a little extra, so I'll make a second smaller tube of chalk. Um, it just depends how much you have left of your mixture as you transfer it, and also how big your toilet paper rolls are, because some brands have a different length than others. So as you start getting your mixture into your roll, you're gonna to wanna to tap it down. Sorry for my table vibrating, but you're gonna to wanna to tap it down. That sends the mixture down into the bottom. It also starts to get air bubbles out in case there are any trapped in there. So a couple spoonfuls of your mixture, then tapping it down then adding more of your mixture. So I'm gonna keep filling this up and don't worry if when you're doing this, you start to come above the actual form. I found that the paper has enough support that it will still form the chalk without a problem. So just keep filling it until your container is empty. Now that you've got your tube all filled, you're going to want to set it aside to let it do its thing and set up. It's going to take a couple of hours until we're able to remove the chalk from the form. So it will take about one hour for the chalk to set and then another hour, maybe a little bit more, until we can actually remove it from the form. One thing you will notice, don't be afraid, is that as this starts to set, if you go over and touch it, you're gonna feel that it gets warm. It won't get hot to the touch, but it will be warm. That's just the chemical reaction happening, and it's kind of fun to go over and check that out. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry and set up, and I'll come back in a couple hours, and we'll be ready to take it out together. So welcome back. We have now given our chalk a couple of hours to set and you can see that it's nice and hard in there and now it's time to remove the chalk from its form and you can't just pull the cardboard tube away there are a couple of different ways you can try to go about this when i made my first chalk i just tore my cardboard tube right off of my chalk and that's fine you just end up in a position where if this was the only paper towel or toilet paper roll that you had, you now can't make another piece of chalk. So what I have found helpful to do is I actually first removed the duct tape from the bottom. And that's pretty easy to do. And I just want to make a note here. You'll see that there's some moisture on the bottom of my cardboard tube. And I'm not exactly sure why, but when I use different kinds of paint, I get a different reaction in terms of moisture. So you can see right now most of this cardboard tube is dry. I found that when I used this brand of the tempera paint, my cardboard tube actually got really wet. 
um, it seeped just water or moisture seeped through the freezer paper to my cardboard tube. It wasn't a problem whatsoever in terms of the integrity of my chalk, but just wanted to make you aware that if you find your tube is getting damp or wet, uh, it's not a problem. Just wait your two hours or a little bit more and your chalk will still be hardened. So what I do next is I actually take my X-Acto knife or blade, and I'm gonna do this on the surface, and I just go ahead and cut a seam down the side of my chalk. And my blade isn't that sharp, so I'm just gonna have to do this a number of times right in that same spot. And what this will allow me to do, it will allow me to peel away my tube but then I've got a really nice straight line and I'll be able to use a piece of duct tape to put my tube back together and I'll be able to use the tube a second time. Of course, if you have multiple tubes, again, you can just tear away your tube. So I open up my tube and take it out and then if I want, I can use a piece of duct tape to seal my tube again and then use it again for my next chalk stick. And now all you need to do is remove your freezer paper. What you'll find is that the dried pieces of chalk will start to crumble. So you want to just again do this in an area where you're not going to make too big of a mess. So I just peel that all away and then I've got kind of this thin excess here and this will just crack right off. And so now we have our very large piece of chalk. And what you wanna do once you remove it from the tube is you wanna place it on a cooling rack and let it dry completely. You'll feel that it'll have some moisture to it. Um, I find that it can take you know one to three days depending on the humidity in the area where you live to just set it out on a cooling rack and let it dry. You can see that I have this cooling rack and these are chalks from a number of different days. So I'm just continuing to let them sit here and dry. You can see though that after a day, I actually went out and tested this one out outside and it worked just fine. Um, but still, you probably want to let your chalk dry and have all of that moisture come out. You can see here where it's drying in certain places. Um, but again, depending on where you live, it can take one to three days for it to dry. And there you have it, a great way to go ahead and have a lot of fun making your own chalk in all different colors. These are really nice big sticks of chalk that should last a long time and give you a lot of opportunities to be creative and inspiring on your sidewalks and your driveways and your streets. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm happy to answer those. Also, if you've liked this video, please feel free to hit like. I would also love it if you enjoyed this video to check out my other videos or subscribe to my channel or come visit me on Instagram at Michelle Joy Wexler. Thanks so much. Be well, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.